So today we're going to enjoy a short reading from the first chapter of Jay-Z Murdoch's Death of Heaven. Um, it was a story that was inspired by his research in college on synesthesia. So it's actually, it's, it's quite interesting because it's all about how our perception of reality is not the actual reality that's going on around us. So with that, um, actually I'm going to read a, a quick review of, of his book and then I'm going to turn it over to him for his reading. And this is from Wild Sound Writing Festival. The story itself is very strong, lulling the reader into a false sense of security as two young boys hunt for treasure, before ultimately morphing into a violent and sometimes disturbing tale of horror. This is done with such swiftness that it takes the reader almost completely by surprise, which only enhances the effect. And over to you. Hey, this is me. Uh, I have a degree in psychology. Um, I was in the Air Force for some years, which paid for my college, so thank you guys for that. <laughs> and uh, this is the first chapter called The Conqueror Worm. Hey. Jimmy, come here. Here, look at this, James said. He was poking at something in the dirt. Jimmy was nearer to the house, poking at his own buried curiosity. They had gotten the spades from the garage and were digging holes in the side yard. Today's effort was to find buried treasure, either gold or dinosaurs. They hit a lot of glacial fill, a mixture of dirt and sizable rock from 100,000 years or so of glaciers proceeding and receding, grinding huge boulders into smaller ones the size of a person's hand or head. It was like this along the Pacific Northwest. This yard in Tacoma, Washington was no different. But this part of the yard was as if it had previously been dug, and re dug up and refilled. What? Jimmy responded, too wrapped up in his own marvelous devices. Look, James said, looking up and realizing that Jimmy had found his own fascinating thing to poke and prod. He looked up at the brilliant blue sky. It felt wonderful. James put his head up, closing his eyes. He breathed in the aroma of a summer day beyond all summer days. Suddenly, a bright light fell out of the sky, or more correctly, it grew on him exponentially and slammed him to the ground. He lay there motionless for a moment. Hearing a twig snap, he opened his eyes. Everything was bleached out from the sun burying upon his closed eyelids. As his vision began to return, he could see that Jimmy had broken the twig he was using to poke at something in the ground. Jimmy lived next door, but across the street from James. Boys played together regularly ever since James' family had moved in the year before. They had become fast friends after their initial meeting. And it was a good one. Just after their sixth grade had let out for the day and with all the adults nowhere to be seen in the schoolyard, Jimmy had walked up to the new kid, James, initially just a little curious. They had just stood there for a moment, eyeing one another. Then, nearly simultaneously, they both hauled back and took a slug at each other. Both had landed blows incompletely and inaccurately. But they were both hardy warriors and had tried again and again and again neither giving an inch. In actuality, neither was much hurt in the fracas. Once they both realized they were pretty evenly matched, they gave up just as quickly as they had started. Jimmy gave James a hand to help him up from the dirt, and from then on, they were quite literally fast friends. They had many adventures in the previous year, searching through the local haunted house on Ventnor Street, finding their way into their soon-to-be junior high building, Stealing apples from crazy old widow Roosevelt's apple tree, which was more about getting caught or not getting caught than it was about the apples. Today's foray, however, was one of archaeology. They were in James' yard digging it up for ancient relics. Not the grassy part, just the dirt part. James' stepmother loved the lush green front yard lawn and badly wanted a nice back and side yard, too. James, like his stepmother, <laughs> James liked his stepmother but still missed his mom. They had been just about ready to move into this house when suddenly his mom had disappeared. She just abandoned them. James and his dad did eventually get a postcard from Seattle saying that she was sorry, that she loved them, but that she just couldn't stay with them any longer and that she was leaving the country. Then she had asked them to try and not think too badly of her and she promised that once she gathered herself back together, she would come back. It was a couple of months after that when James found out his dad was remarrying saying that he had received divorce papers from James's mother through a lawyer and that she was in Saigon. Though James couldn't understand that, it was still how things were. 
So Jimmy never got to meet James's mom, but they both liked his stepmom a lot, and that helped some. She was nice, but a little odd. Jimmy thought she was hot. Every time Jimmy said anything about it, James would punch him in the arm. Jimmy would just laugh. But James and his dad did what they could to make his stepmom happy. And so someone was hired to put in a new lawn. The trouble was that the back and side yards had such big rocks, exceptional glacial fill, as James's father had called it, that the guy they hired to use his tilling machine to dig it up finally surrendered. In fact, he seemed kind of angry when he had packed up to leave. James figured that it had something to do with his machine just stopping all together right in the middle of the tilling, and then it wouldn't start again. <coughs> so for the past year, the grassless parts of the yard had remained the grassless parts of the yard. And so, too, the boys, and so to the boys, the yard seemed like ancient burial grounds or the fields of Egyptian kings. Today's foray was a beckoning of ancient treasures. It came upon them suddenly, right after watching a documentary in school on how archaeologists dig up dinosaur bones. Just the night before, they had watched the Johnny Depp pirate movie as one of the coolest pirates ever. Always looked like he was drunk. It was pretty funny and very entertaining, so today they were pirate archaeologists. Okay, what do you have going, James said, waiting to see what Jimmy had unearthed. I don't know, he said, standing up, mostly ignoring him. It's like a worm, but not. I've never seen a worm that was so thick and, well, white. They both peered down into the hole. It was about two feet deep, and just at the bottom, the boys could see the worm wiggling. It was in the shadows of the hole, so not the easiest thing to see, and therefore... Classify, Jimmy said. That's what we have to do now. Classify it. Squatting, James looked up, remembering the show they had watched. Water, James said. We need water. It will soften the earth, and we can, well, unearth it. Jimmy looked reticent. I don't know. That will just make it muddy, Jimmy said. The boys stared at one another, waiting for one of them to show the knowledge and foresight to make a decision. I don't know. Maybe. Jimmy squatted, too, and reached deep and prodded the worm with his finger. At the moment he touched it, something made him jerk his hand back like he had received an electric shock. Something about it really spooked him. He looked up at James. Well, otherwise, James said, we might tear it in half, trying to get it out. Nothing worse than two worms that were just one. Even if they turn into two whole worms, then we've wrecked our artifact. True, true, Jimmy said. Here, let me see your stick. He picked up his stick, an eight-inch long piece of thin branch. He poked at the worm. Nothing. He manipulated as James watched. He moved it first one way, then back the other several times, and then he stopped. They just stared at it for a minute. Suddenly, it moved of its own accord. Both boys jumped. James actually fell back on his butt. Damn, they both said in harmony. Screw this. Jimmy got up and walked over to the house. He got the hose off its holder that was attached to the house and turned on the water. Then he walked back to James and filled the hole with water, drenching the soil. Great. Now we just have a mud hole, James said. They sat in the sun watching their new mini pond. Hey, move the hose away. Jimmy moved the hose off and they watched as the water level dropped. Even they could tell it was going down far too fast to be just seeping into the hard packed earth. What the? Jimmy said. In another minute, the hole was empty again and the worm was no longer exposed. Then the mud moved again and they saw it, wrinkled and shriveled flesh, avoiding any and all light. Since they couldn't see the other end, there was no way telling just how long this thing was. I've never seen a worm with skin like that. James was getting irritated. Man, it's coming out of there one way or the other. Just as he was about to reach into the bottom of the hole and pull the worm out, the sun had breached the bottom of the hole as the day hit high noon. Finally, they could get a clear and bright look at it. But as the sun hit the flesh of the thing, it suddenly pulled itself in the mud and nearly disappeared. It was as if the sun had hurt it. Its movement was quick, too quick. Like it's feeling pain from the sunlight, James said as he looked up at the sky. What the hell, Jimmy said. So it's a vampire. We found a vampire, he said rather cheerfully. Uh, right, James said, giving his friend an incredulous smirk. A vampire worm. Just then, James' mother called from the front door. Boys, it's lunchtime. Come on in and wash your hands. Ah, oh, crap, James said. It's always something. And then he walked away. Jimmy looked down and kicked a nearby rock, releasing some of the anxiety and annoyance of being pulled away. The rock skittered and fell squarely into the hole, settling down to a wet, quiet sunbath. 
He shrugged his shoulders and started to look away, but out of the corner of his eye, he caught the rock moving. He did a double take. This was too big a rock for any worm wheel to move, but there was no further movement, so he tossed the stick and walked off. Maybe they'd check it out later. He was hungry now. James was standing once again, at the edge of the hole this time, alone. It was dark out now. The neighborhood was silent. A crescent moon was smiling down upon him, a sardonic smile from the face of outer space. It gave him the creeps. He felt watched. Peering down into the hole, he could see that there was still something down there at the bottom. He reached into the hole, down into the darkness, into its lair, and could feel the cold white worm. Frustrated and having waited this long to figure out what the hell it was, he threw caution to the wind and grabbed it. The thing seemed to be buried pretty well in the dirt, so he pulled up on it in a circular motion. Welcome back, Evan. It didn't seem to want to go in certain directions very much. Off in the distance, James heard a dog howling. A breeze crawled gently over him, but it seemed too warm for this time of night. Still, it warmed him because the worm he had in his hand was too cold and a bit too solid. He had to see it. He figured, if nothing else, it might make a good show and tell the school. Maybe he got extra credit for it. Or maybe they discovered a new kind of creature. He pulled harder on it, not wanting to rip it in half. He loosened up and got a better hold on it. Then, quite without James expecting it, it curled away, just as it had done earlier that day. A cold chill followed a line of sweat down his spine. Without any warning, a wave of fear washed over him as the word worm grabbed his hand, locking onto him. He tried to pull it back, but he couldn't. It was pulling him down, down into the hole, toward it. James pulled back, pulled as hard as he could. Bracing himself, he yanked back on it. Screw trying to keep it one piece, he thought. At this point, he really didn't care how many pieces he tore it into. Then his face slammed into the dirt on the edge of the hole. He was going down, and he knew it. James filled his lungs with air. He thought about screaming for his dad, for Jimmy, for anyone. The ground next to the hole began to give way, breaking apart from something that was trying to come up from beneath. It grabbed his wrist, moving up his forearm. The dirt rising above him as it fell away off of whatever it was that was rising above him. He began to see a naked, white-skinned form in the half-light of the moon. James was too scared now even to scream. He tried, but nothing would come out. As in a dream, when you try to scream, but nothing comes out, or when you shoot a gun at a dream monster, but the bullet only drops out of the barrel onto the ground, lying there, impotent and ineffectual. He'd seen that last one in a movie and thought it was a great scene, pretty scary. But when you are terrified and you shoot something, even if the bullet is ineffectual, you at least want it to hit what you shot at. <laughs> Two putrid yellow-green eyes appeared, rising still through all the mud and dirt as the mound broke into pieces and became a being. It pulled him to it. His face brought inches from an inhuman white face, its eyes changing now to red and bulging. James, it rasped at him. It's mommy. Then she bit into his face. Unbelievable pain filled his skull while she continued to rip away at his face in bites and pieces. She started chewing it, smiling a lipless grin. Mm, yummy, she bit into his face, crunching again as she, he continued to scream. Her teeth chomped repeatedly on him, the sound knocking around inside his skull, and then tap, tap, tap. James sat bolt upright in bed. A cool sweat covered his entire body. He tried to fully wake up. His eyes were bulging. His breathing came fast and hard. He felt the sweat running down his back, his chest, his face. He shook his head in a panic and then felt his face. It was fine. It was all there. He breathed easier. Tap, tap, tap. James, James. <laughs> Jimmy was standing outside of James' bedroom window. It was late. <coughs> the moon was full this summer night. Clouds passed by in the warm evening air. They moved along, allowing moonbeams to fall upon the earth in an eerie and perfectly creepy fashion. Jimmy loved it. James moved the curtain aside and raised up the double-paned window. Hey, Jimmy said. Ready? <laughs> and, and then it gets scary. <laughs> I didn't want you to stop. Yay. <laughs> and I was telling her earlier that I tell people that just read the first chapter of this book and if you like it, keep going. If you don't, quit. Mm -hmm. But if you do like it, understand that it gets a lot more scary after that. So be prepared.